welcome to my channel. Today I shall be showing you how I made this pair of 18th century stays. I made these stays for my Rapunzel cosplay. I kind of tried to stick with Rapunzel's original color scheme for these stays, so the colors and stuff might not be completely historically accurate. Besides that, I really tried to make it as historically accurate as I possibly could. I looked at a lot of online sources as well as books. A book that was very helpful to me was the book uh, Corsets and Crinolines by Nora Wall. I really like this book. My pattern came from it and it has a lot of information about uh, history, about stays, where they came from, how they were made. So that was really good. And I also used a couple of other um, sources. I will link them down below so you can check them out. I also want to give a big shout out to Enchanted Rose Costumes. She also made these stays and she also made a video about them. And her video was so helpful to me because the book Courses and Crinolines isn't always as good at giving descriptions and sometimes I got really confused about what I had to do so I could then go back to her video and watch it and see how she did this so if you're watching this you were a big big help to me thank you so much definitely go and check out her channel I'll link her down below and I really hope you enjoy this video if you like it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I will be posting a lot more sewing videos. And if you want to see more from me, you can also follow me on Instagram. I'm very active on there. I post things in my stories about sewing almost every day. And I post a lot of sewing and cosplay related stuff on my profile as well. I started off by scaling up my pattern. I did this by taking a screenshot of the page in the book and importing it into Photoshop. If you have a physical copy of the book, you can also just take a picture. Next you go to image and then image size. This will open up a box with information about the image you're working with. I up the resolution to about 400 dots per inch. This already enlarges the image a lot. After that I kept adjusting the width of the image until the inch bar on my screen matched with the inches on my measuring tape. While you do this, make sure your screen in Photoshop is set to 100%, otherwise the sizes still won't match up. Once that was the right length, I checked the waistline of the pattern just to see if it would match up with my waist, which it did. Then I saved it as a PDF and printed the pattern as a poster. This will divide the image into several papers and then you can just cut out the pattern and put all of the pieces together. Once I had my finished pattern, I cut out all of these separate corset pieces out of some thick white cotton I still had. I transferred the boning channels by laying the pattern on top of the fabric and drawing the tops and bottoms of every line. I did this with a pencil because it was a mock-up anyway so it didn't really have to look perfect. And after that I connected all of the lines with a ruler. After transferring all of the channels to the fabric, it was time to stitch them down. This is the only part of this entire project that I did on my sewing machine, because hand stitching all of the channels like they would have done in the 18th century would have taken me forever and I had a pretty tight deadline for this project and it already took way longer than I was initially expecting it to, so yeah, I didn't have time to hand stitch all of the 
doos. I just finished stitching all of the boning channels into the mock-up of my stays. Um, it took me about four hours, I think. Um, I already boned one piece just to see what it would look like. I like just doing things like that to kind of see it take shape. Um, and so far I really like how it's turning out. Um, it's going to take about two days for the rest of my boning to arrive. Uh, this is what I still had uh, at home. And yesterday evening I measured all of the boning channels to see how much synthetic boning I had to order to um, bone all of these. Uh, it's about 220 boning channels, I believe. And I need to get um, 35 meters of boning in total. So that should arrive in about two or three days from now. Um, and I already uh, saw some places where I have to make the boning channels larger, like right here. I can never fit the bone into that channel, it's way too small. And I think it would rip that way. So I'm definitely glad I'm making this mock-up. Um, because those are some things that I'm going to have to correct with my real version of these stays. Uh, something else I came across while working with this pattern um, is that these lines that the boning channels should be are kind of hard to see when you get all up close. Because from far away you can see where they are, but up close with the dots that are in between it was very hard to see where the lines would go sometimes, so I kind of guessed. But I think that for my real version of these stays, I'm just going to measure how wide my bones are instead of following these lines. And kind of recreate what uh, the pattern says, but kind of do it in my own way. So that I don't have problems like these with the bones not being able to fit into their channels. And something I also didn't do while making this mock-up was add seam allowance. Um, when I printed the pattern I measured the waistline and I believe it's 74 centimeters and my own waist is 70 to 68. So I think the corset or the stays will be too big. So I didn't add the seam allowance, but I should have done that because these have to be stitched together. And with very tiny boning channels like these, they're just completely going to disappear. And you can also see it with my already boned piece, like right here, these two should still be boning channels, but they're just way too small. So I really need to add some seam allowance and see if I can make the pattern smaller around the waist to make it fit properly. I finally got my boning for these stays in the mail. Uh, I ended up ordering 30 meters of it. Um, these are synthetic bones. Uh, in the 18th century, I know that whale boning used to be the most common and that uh, today you can use synthetic whale bones, but those aren't very <laughs> budget friendly. Uh, and these only cost me 12 euros for 30 meters, so I ended up going for these synthetic ones. And I also chose to go for these because uh, online a lot of people also recommended using zip ties to bone your stays with. So I was like, if I can use zip ties, I can also use synthetic boning. So right now I'm going to bone the rest of my stays and I'll come back to you after that.
I finally finished boning all of the pieces of my stays mock up. It was really hard to get some of these bones into their channels because the boning I previously bought was 5 millimeters wide. So that's also how wide I made my boning channels and they could slid in pretty well. But the new boning I got was 6 millimeters. So it was harder to get them into their channels. So now my hands really hurt. I'm going to take a break and let my hands rest for a bit and then I'm going to stitch all of these pieces together and actually get the stays into the right shape and see how they fit. The stitch I'm using for sewing the pieces together is one that I saw on the Marie Antoinette episode of the BBC series A Stitch in Time. In this video the seamstress who is making the stays shows a stitch that was used back in the 18th century for stitching the pieces together. She explains the stitch way better than I ever could, so if you want a proper explanation besides what I'm showing here in the video, I recommend checking out the episode. It's up on YouTube, so I'll link it in the description below. And it's a fantastic series, so I really recommend watching just all of the episodes. I learned so much from it. Here is my first fitting for the stays and I have to be honest I'm so happy with how this mock-up turned out. I actually don't think I have to make too many adjustments to this. Um, I am going to make the shoulder straps a bit more wide and a bit longer to about here because I just like the way they look when they fully wrap over my shoulder. And I think I'm going to make the modesty panel just a bit taller so that it completely covers this edge because this strap keeps going over it and that's really annoying. So I either have to find a way to not make that happen or just make it a tiny bit taller because right here you can also see that it doesn't fully go to the top uh, but I do like how long it is so I'm just going to add about a centimeter or two at the top and besides that I'm very happy obviously some at some places the boning is coming out of the channels because I didn't have enough room to actually stitch them uh, so I'm definitely going to change that with the final version of the stays. But yeah, besides that, I am really happy with how they look. And actually they're so comfortable, which I'm 
very happy about as well. Obviously, since they're fully boned, I was kind of scared that they would be uncomfortable because there's so much boning around my body. But yeah, I'm very surprised with how comfortable they are. So I'm going to make those tiny adjustments to my pattern and besides that, I don't think I'm going to change anything. And here's a shot of the back. I'm sorry that I can't really film this properly. Um, I still have to look up a proper tutorial for how to lace these. But um, overall I'm very happy with the back too. I might add just a couple more um, eyelets down here so that these don't go over each other like this. And that they're just next to each other how they should be. Um, but besides that I'm very happy and I, there's a, back, a gap right here but I think that's just because I had to lace them myself and I didn't lace them properly so I think that should be fixed. 